Hey everybody, it's Master Gallengeist here, bringing you the Marvel October for December 2023 solicitations. And there's a lot of interesting stuff going on here. I'm really kind of excited to kind of like pour through this and kind of uh, show kind of the stuff that I'm kind of interested in. And if I don't hit one that you kind of are interested in, tell me about it in the comments. So... We pop off and we see that we're getting another Timeless, Timeless Issue 1. Uh, this one will be $6.99, 56 pages, not bad. Let's see, Behold the Future of the Marvel Universe, featuring the debut of two new Marvel icons and a devastating future born from the choices of today. All of time and space is threatened by the ascension of an ancient evil. The Moon Knight Unending has risen, a nightmare born of Stark Tech, the Eternal Machine, and the God of the Moon. And now all of Earth bows before his overwhelming power. But did he come... Let me see. Oh, but one man stands against Khonshu's coming tide of chaos, Power Man, the Marvel Universe's final living superhero. But who is Power Man? And how did he come to wield the unstable powers of the Sentry, the Hulk, and the Iron Fist? The dark, deeply personal conflict underpins this mind-bending. Uh, what dark personal? Bleh, dark, deeply personal conflict underpins this mind-bending apocalypse. And at the end of the line, can the Marvel universe ever truly be saved? Plus, a shocking glimpse of the next year of Marvel stories. So, yeah, that sounds kind of weird and interesting. Like that kind of combination of powers for those kind of guys just. Sounds insane, and I kind of love that cover of seeing like Power Man with that Iron Fist right there. Uh, with also seeing the green of the Hulk kind of going in there with uh, the Moon Knight unending, just looking nutty. So, if you're interested in that, uh, look into that. And that seems to be a kind of trend with certain kind of super ones going to $6.99 now. And then we get the kind of big thing that was popping off from the front the death of Moon Knight. It's like Moon Knight is dead. And that's kind of what Moon Knight 30 deals with by uh, Jed McKay. Uh, the Terminal Seconds of Moon Knight. Knight's End. The Battle of the Mount reaches an explosive conclusion, and all that stands in the way of the Black Scepter. Uh, Sep uh, uh, fuck. Uh, the way of the Black Spectre's scheme of annihilation is Moon Knight, but can Moon Knight triumph against the odds arrayed against him, or will the Mount stand as his tombstone? With all hope of resurrection gone, Moon Knight's life hangs on the line along with Manhattan. 40 pages, four ninety nine. Hmm, interesting. I thought that would be a kind of bigger one if it was going to be the death there. And then we get Long Live the Night, and this... I'm like, oh damn, I heard that they were changing up Moon Knight's uh, outfit and costume, and I really actually like it. I mean, I'm not uh, into Moon Knight very much, but I'm like, ooh, that looks really kind of cool. At least for me, and if you don't agree, that's cool. I understand. So we get Vengeance of the Moon Knight issue 1, and this one is on sale in January, and is 40 pages and $5.99 for, uh, uh, like, a new issue 1, so we'll see how that kind of works out. Clad in the black of morning, the midnight mission remains. But who is left to keep the faith, and how have they been changed by the Black uh, Spectre's master stroke? The next chapter of Moon Knight starts here as the congregants of the Midnight Mission pick up the pieces and carry on the mission, find themselves faced with a mysterious new enemy in eerily familiar vestments. Like, I know that like Moon Knight has usually different personalities and stuff, and that technically killing Moon Knight uh, could lead to them just act like killing off one of the personalities, but I don't think that's kind of what's kind of going on here. So, then we shift over and we get stuff for Amazing Spider-Man, leading us with the whole kind of gang war bit with Amazing Spider-Man issue 39. Gang war kicks off here, so we don't have long to wait for that going on. So, we'll see kind of how the rest of the stories kind of wrap up and how we kind of get here. Super crime is running rampant and Spider-Man can't, uh, can't solve only one problem at a time. So, Spidey builds a team to take down all the super criminals of New York City in 48 hours. Good luck, Spidey. And that... It's 40 pages up to $5.99. So that'll be interesting. Um, pricing wise and different kind of paging wise. I'm like. Okay, so it's only a little bit more. It's because of the extra pages, because then we flipped over to the next one for Amazing Spider Man uh, issue 40. And that one is 32 pages at $4.99. So. 
Uh, it looks like certain kind of ones that go up a little bit will increase by a dollar, but even Spidey is going up from $3.99 to $4.99, so keep that in mind. So this one, Gang War Continues. Battle lines are drawn uh, with Spidey and his crew being the only ones who can save all of New York City uh, from the worst super criminals to ever super criminal. But is Tombstone on their side, and you won't believe your eyes reading the last page of this issue. Which, that's kind of cool. Now, even though I'm just going for Amazing Spider-Man, that's pretty much where I'm going to be going. But we also do have Daredevil 1 of 4 with Gang War stuff going on, so check that out. He is on in Hell's Kitchen. Electra uh, Nachios, former assassin turned Daredevil, has been recruited by the Amazing Spider-Man to stop New York City from tearing itself apart. As every monster and supervillain in town go to war, and Electra is the only thing standing in the way of Hell's Kitchen's annihilation at the hands of a dangerous new gang, the Heat, whose violent schemes from the pages of Daredevil unfold. It's like, interesting. And then, of course, we get Miles popping off in there as well. Uh, detailing looks like he is fighting... Uh, and dealing with the Hobgoblin on um, 13, and the Prowler entering the battlefield in 14. Then we get uh, uh, Shang-Chi popping off into there as well, and Spider-Woman. And Luke Cage as well. I do like the kind of Luke Cage one, which is interesting because he's the mayor, but going off in a different kind of way. Oh, he... Uh, Get this. Okay, he's got uh, two of four as well. Um, taking it to the streets. The city needs a hero more than it needs a mayor. In the midst of a turbulent gang war, Luke Cage goes undercover and uh, takes his battle to the streets to track down a new generation of spider slayers. But he won't be alone. Cloak and Dagger, Jessica Jones, and Danny Rand guest star. Ooh, that sounds pretty cool. And we got Superior Spider-Man issue 2. No time travel, no clones, just superior spidering. The sins of Otto Octavius' past are exacting a heavy toll on the present, and one of Peter Parker's closest friends must pay the price for them. The secrets revealed in our last issue didn't fill you with dread. Wait till you see how this one ends. Like, hmm, okay. Interesting, so if you're into that, look into that for Superior Spider-Man. We also get Carnage doing some crazy stuff. Uh, Spider-Boy evidently linking up with Captain America. Yeah, because uh, Spider-Man gets a lesson in sidekicks from none other than Captain America, which works out and makes sense. I'm like, all right, I was like Spidey and uh, Cap working together like that. Then we also get Punisher issue two. It's like, oh, the new Punisher. No one escapes the Punisher. Deep in the heart of New York City, the crime lord known as the Offer trades in every currency on the planet. Barricaded within his fortified tower, he is defended by an army of guards, the latest in cutting edge security, and a team of stone cold supervillains capable of slaughtering a battalion. With the limitless resources at uh, with, yeah, with the limitless resources at his disposal, the author thinks he is untouchable. He's about to learn that no one escapes the Punisher. And that one's yeah, I'm seeing the thing that like most of this kind of stuff throughout the issues are four ninety nine for the new ones. We're getting a White Widow. Uh, Two or four, nice, and then gods. Now, I didn't know what was going on with gods. Whoop, we're going down a little bit. Um, I didn't know how many were going to be in this. I don't know if it was a series or whatnot. Through uh, certain kind of interviews, I saw that it will go as long as there's interest for it. So if anything else, I might check it out when it's um, in a trade or whatnot. Uh, I don't know. I'll see how it kind of goes because if it was a limited kind of one. I might check it out, but it might be more, I might check it out at a later kind of point and see kind of what goes on. Because it does sound interesting. Gods, issue three. This one's $4.99. Uh, Cassandra is cursed with knowing the future, but no one believes her. There are black swans in the bar. Oblivion wants to drink alone, but kids these days don't respect authority figures. Most of the ingredients are illegal outside of Hell's Kitchen. And granted, that is also a pretty kind of cool cover, but it's like, I don't, I don't know what's going on, so that doesn't make sense for me. Oh, we got Sensational She-Hulk issue 3. And some zombie shit going on. Cap and the Howling Commandos. So if you're in your wolf cap and everything, check that out. Let's see. With Cap Wolf at the helm, the Howling Commandos are ready to take down their foes at Wolf Shuns. Wolf... Wolf Shun? I do not know how to pronounce that. I'm sorry. I'm butchering that. But the Nazis have a secret... We... Uh, we... <laughs> we... Been have a secret weapon up their sleeves. And if she can't win Steve's allegiance, she'll happily settle for his head. It's like, that ain't good. 
And we got Captain Marvel with kind of her new outfit, which actually looks pretty cool. I kind of like that. Spine Tingling Spider-Man, Predator vs. Wolverine is going to be ending at that with its 404. Crazy ass looking cover there. Let's see, for similarly editions, we've got Marvel Voices Avengers issue 1. And there came a day, a day unlike any other, when Earth's mightiest heroes from all walks of life united against a common threat. Join a team of Marvel's finest creators, from veterans to new recruits full of potential, for four tremendous tales of Earth's mightiest heroes. Don't miss the latest anthology of Marvel's Voices series. That's 56 pages at $6.99. That's pretty interesting. I do like the cover with, like, Iron Man, Cap, uh, Photon? Blue Marvel? And they're on top of Reyes' car. I'm thinking Monica Rambo. I don't know what she's going by, though. Spider-Gwen Smash, which, pretty cool looking cover. Hmm. Then we got some interesting stuff here on this one. We get Sentry 104 and Thunderbolts 104, and then we also get the Avengers. So, Sentry 104. A century is dead, but ordinary people all over the world are suddenly manifesting his powers and experiencing snippets of Bob Reynolds' memories. That is not good. Will one of them survive long enough to emerge as the new Sentry, or will their newfound power destroy them? When Misty Knight and Jessica Jones cross paths in search of answers, they open an investigation that will change everything you think you know about the Sentry. Which, that's pretty interesting to have them uh, searching on the case, so that actually sounds pretty cool. So if you're in your Sentry, it's like, that's kind of a weird thing. Let's see what goes on here. And then this is Thunderbolts, issue 104. Bucky Barnes, the new revolution, just inherited a mountain of covert intel. And he has one objective, justice, like lightning. He's going after the establishment, the people no one else is willing or able to take down, and he'll do whatever it takes to win. Teaming with the mysterious Contessa Valentina Allegra de Fontaine, Bucky assembles a team of Black Ops heavy hitters to pursue high-profile targets like the Red Skull, Kingpin, and even Dr. Doom himself. No one is safe from the Thunderbolts. That's kind of an interesting kind of setup there. So if that intrigues you, go for that. And then we get Avengers Issue 8. Trapped in a world they never made, the Avengers struggle to break free. While one of their number fights their own hopeless battle against uh, Meriden and his Twilight Court. But Avengers never fight alone. The most dangerous Avenger joins the battle. Ooh, we're bringing that back up. That's 32 pages at $3.99. Okay, it's just being inconsistent at the moment, but I think that will eventually get to where regular issues are $4.99. Yeah, because then here we get Daredevil issue 4. Four. Don't miss Bullseye. Bullseye makes his bloody entrance into Matt Murdock's new life, and Hell's Kitchen is caught in the crossfire. As bodies pile up, Daredevil is forced to make an impossible choice between stopping his deadliest enemy and saving the soul of his friend. It's like, Damn! And we get... Fantastic Four, 14. A year ago, Reed Richards sent a whole city block, uh, sent a whole city block the Baxter Building stands on, along with his own children and the children of his best friends, Ben and Alicia, a year ahead in time. It was a desperate measure, but it saved them. And now it's time for them to all come back. But when the Fantastic Four arrive in New York City, they find something is being built in the pit where the block once stood. And worse, nobody seems to know exactly what it is or what they're building, uh, why they're building it. With the clock ticking, they investigate this mystery and discover a mysterious new threat that may have been pulling the strings this entire time. That one's $3.99 as well, 32 pages. And it's interesting uh, seeing uh, Mr. Fantastic read having to deal with those kind of ones that I've seen mainly from uh, Spider Man. So it's like, huh, that's weird. Well, let's see how that works out. We have Invincible Iron Man issue 13, which is a really cool looking cover with Tony and Emma. As it's like Iron Man and Emma Frost go intergalactic. Iron Man has become the X-Men's worst nightmare. Without a company, without his armory, how can Tony Stark make things right? The answer might lie beyond Earth. 32 pages, $3.99. Definitely looking forward to that one. Star Wars, ooh, Blade Issue 6, Enter Dracula. It's like, ooh, yeah. It's always interesting there. Uh, until Blade became Sheriff of Vampire Nation, Dracula was his sworn enemy. Now Dracula is the only one who can teach Blade what he still needs to learn about himself, and how to unlock new powers of vampirism Blade didn't even know he possessed. It's like, alright, so I hope that's going well and the people are having fun with that. Venom looks kind of nutty there, it's like, what the hell is kind of going on there? 
Ooh, Uncanny Avengers looks kind of nutty right there as they learn it looks like the identity of Captain Krakoa, which kind of might look like it's linking to Hydra Cap potentially. And that's issue 5 of 5. Captain Krakoa unmasked, and that's it. Ooh, Avengers 60th Anniversary variant cover. That's pretty cool. X-Men Red, Immortal X-Men, Original X-Men Issue 1, which is kind of weird because I thought we had already done this kind of thing. Oh, okay, now it kind of explains it. The OG5 uh, on an all-new adventure. Let's see. Cyclops, Marvel Girl, Beast, Iceman, and Angel, the first and greatest heroes to bear the X-Men name, once traveled into their own futures and reset the course of history. Now another multiversal mystery calls them forth. When the dust settles, one hero will remain trapped in the world as we know it. With shocking uh, surprise guests and heart-pounding twists and turns, Christos Gage and Greg uh, Land kick off a story that will shake the whole MU. Hmm, we'll see. <laughs> we get uh, Wolverine and Spidey dealing with the Stark Sentinels in Wolverine 40. Stark Sentinels get Spidey sen uh, spider senses tingling. The last mutant standing finale, Logan's journey across the Orcus-controlled globe brings him to New York City in a reunion that... Uh, with that great non-mutant superhero, Spider-Man. Will the old Parker Luck help Wolverine against the wrath of the Stark Sentinels or put uh, the fall in the fall of X? Ooh, here we go. We got Avengers Inc. and Captain America on this one. Avengers Inc. issue 4. Uh, go for the juggler. Her name is Janet Van Dyne. She got a file on the Death Throes, a uh, workers' cooperative for themed supervillains that's taller than she is. His name is Victor Shade. Apparently, he's been a mer uh, member for years. Together, they've got to find out who's uh, picking the Death Throes off one by one before it's his turn. Plus, his very last guest appearance prior to his demise on Moon Knight. And then we get Captain America issue 4. The enemy strikes. When the mysterious organization targeting Captain America goes on the offensive, Steve Rogers thinks he's prepared. But the battle is not what it seems. Who or what is the emissary? Ooh, alright, cool. So we get more kind of information on that front. And that one is $4.99. Ooh, Black Panther issue 7. A faction war brewing in Burning T'Chaka. Black Panther learns the uh, the de uh, eh, learns the devastation of Kivu Ma and must deal with the aftermath, but it leaves him and all of Burnin T'Chaka shaken. Uh, Besa enlists Black Panther's help in her ongoing investigation against Wakanda's crime families, which leads to an unexpected and beloved Marvel character's appearance who may know a thing or two about living in exile. Plus, Biddy, as you've never seen her before. And then we get the really kind of cool, like, I mean, that's a really good Black Panther cover, and I really like this Thor cover, too. The Immortal Thor issue 5. That's just crazy looking. The all-new Thor Corps. Uh, Thor Corps. Uh, Tyrannos has returned, and to face him, the King of Asgard has gathered his army. But even, uh, but if even an army of storm gods cannot stop the Elder God of Thunder, what then? This is the story of the Immortal Thor, and the battle that will define him. That one's four ninety nine as well. I really, I'm... I've been enjoying that one. I can't wait to see what goes on with that. Ah, we got Doctor Strange issue 10. General Strange versus the Sorcerer Supreme. General Strange has a millennium of fierce and ruthless experience over the Sorcerer Supreme. How can Doctor Strange protect the Earth and all of magic? And what dark creature will he have to become to best General Strange? 32 pages, $3.99. That's a crazy look cover there. Man, just the eyes and everything. Ghost Rider 20 run. End of the road, the cult of Mephesto is possessing the next generation of humanity. But even if the spirit of vengeance stops the cult, what does this mean for the future of Ghost Rider? Could this be the end of an era? And I just like how crazy that looks with his skull just smoking instead of flaming. The Incredible Hulk issue 7. Hulk versus the War Devils. The Hulk and the undead Ghost Rider make amends, but Ghost Rider smells an evil in the air. It's been terrorizing a small community. With Bruce's teenage sidekick, Charlie, determined to prove, him, uh, prove herself a hero, Hulk must face them uh, must face them down before she gets herself uh, into more trouble than she bargained for. It's like, ooh, uh, that sounds nutty. And it's cool that uh, Ghost Rider's in there. And we get, like, some Alien and Star Wars ones. Mando, Vader. Dark, what the fuck? All right, that droid looks fucking gnarly as shit in Sauron. Like, it's a like, goddamn... Then looking at different kind of Stormbreakers variants. Oh, cool. New reprintings of certain kind of ones. Captain Spidey. 
Thor by Walter Simonson. Omnibus. Ooh, that's cool. Let's see. Some interesting ones come out. Marvel Masterworks, Captain America. Scarlet Witch and stuff. Cool. But yeah, I would definitely recommend kind of picking this up to kind of check out what's going on. Oh shit, Dark Avengers. God, I remember when that was going on. It's cool. Everything kind of runs off and comes back and stuff. So, I'm really looking forward to a lot of different kind of stuff in here. Mainly Cap, Thor, Avengers, Spidey, uh, Fantastic Four, Doctor Strange, all that kind of stuff. But there's a lot of kind of cool stuff uh, in here. Uh, if you want to, check it out. Look into it. See what's going on. Uh, it's free previews uh, to see what you kind of want to look at. If anything kind of interest you so tell me in the comments uh what you guys think what you're excited for um uh if you agree with me or disagree with me on certain kind of things of what's kind of going on also just a heads up always kind of look into these to see stuff with certain kind of pricing because i know that like people need to make decisions on what they kind of want to check out and what they kind of don't want to check out if they want to uh, go for certain kind of things. It looks like we're getting some weird kind of pricing fluctuations. Certain titles are going up in price. Certain ones are holding off on that price increase. We'll see kind of what goes on, but I'm really looking forward to a lot of the different stuff. I'm like, oh yeah, cool. Uh, I can't wait to see what kind of goes on in September and to see what kind of goes on. So, those are my opinions on the solicitations. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. What you're excited for. Uh, if you're not excited for anything. If you agree with me. If you disagree with me. Uh, and uh, like and subscribe. And I hope you have a good day.